Hidalgo County Elections Administrator Ivan Ramon joining us on 710 KURV. Good Any, morning. Anything to report early on? I know the polls have been open for 45 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. Well, there were some poll locations that took a while to open. Uh, 75 poll locations sometimes does create a miscommunication with uh, people that are in charge of opening the buildings. But you know what? We, we've got everything on the road. We've got uh, all poll locations ready to go. So we're, we're anxiously awaiting all the voters that we expect. All locations, 75 locations, every single one has a, a Democrat desk and a Republican desk. All you need to find is your specific precinct, and where do you go for that? Well, we have got a wonderful voter lookup tool on our website, and all they have to do is put in their name and their year of birth, and it will give them their precinct number and their polling location. So don't leave your home without knowing exactly where you're supposed to vote. You can also call the office and get that information at 318-2570. Make sure to take an acceptable form of ID. Make sure that you do this timely during the day so that our lines aren't very long, close to seven, uh, when sometimes people make the time to go out finally and vote. Try to get it done during the day. Don't vote during lunch hour. You might not make it back to work on time. (laughs) Exactly. Those are peak hours. Yeah. You can see the bar Uh, graphs just spike up during the lunch hour and, of course, uh, Right before 7. Yvonne mm-hmm. Ramon is the elections administrator for Hidalgo County, joining us on 710 KURV. Uh, Yvonne, I'll ask you what I asked uh, your colleague in Cameron County, uh, Remy Garza. Mm-hmm. Any problems that you can foresee uh, happening on what will be a very busy day, and what contingencies do you have in place to you know, ward off any potential problems? We, we just had a massive mail out in December, and uh, so if, if a voter did not receive that baby blue voter certificate uh, within the month of, of uh, December, then obviously there is something wrong as far as the certificate not arriving. If that certificate, which is non-deliverable, they cannot forward that on, if that card got returned to our office, that means they are put under what is called suspense, not suspended. They are an active voter, but when they get to the polls, before they're allowed to vote on the machine, they're going to have to fill out what is called a statement of residence. That will take more time. So the time to make all those arrangements and find out, oh my goodness, I didn't get my card, is now. Because that will take more time. So I can foresee this happening. Um, We've got right now 29,000 people on suspense. Not all of them from this past massive mail-out but from previous, and that is because we have a mobile type of community. People move, um, the the address may not be correctly uh, put on the card, or we may have made a processing error. So if you don't have that certificate in hand, you don't have to bring it to the polls to vote, but if you didn't receive it, then call the office, get this cleared up, or it will take more time at the polls. Is what you're detailing, is that different from casting a provisional ballot? Well, Are we talking two different things? Yes, you are, okay. because a, a person on suspense is an active voter. So as soon as they fill out that SOR, Statement of Residence, then they are directed to go to a machine and vote on the machine. Mm-hmm. A provisional is uh, administered under two circumstances. Number one, they just can't find you. You know, you said, I went to DPS or I, I mailed my uh, voter application, and you know what? We can't find you. We've done everything. So you vote on a paper ballot, which is a provisional, when that provisional gets to my office, we continue the search. I, we go through the appraisal. We go through 911. We do all, everything and anything to find you. If it's found that you are not registered, then, of course, ballot board has to make a decision, which would be not to accept it. But let's say we do find you. Then, great, your ballot has been cast. You've shown your ID. And that ballot by ballot board will then be accepted. Okay. The second type of provisional is you are a registered voter. We did find you. But guess what? I left my wallet on the counter at home, oh. and I don't have my ID. Yep. Well. Okay. You can cast a provisional, and you've got time to come to the office and show that ID. There we go. And your ballot will be accepted. There we go. And that's well, what you luck. get. A lot yeah. of work ahead, sounds like. Today. That's what you get if you don't take the ID with you. So before you go vote today, if you have not voted and and you wish to vote, take the ID with you. And a quick that's check right. of some of the eligible IDs. Um, what, what do folks need to take with them? 
Well, the most common, of course, is our driver's license, which, by the way, any of these IDs, they can be expired, but no longer than 60, 60, no longer than 60 days. So your driver's license, DPS also issues out several. Uh, they issue out the personal ID. They issue out your open carry or concealed handgun uh, license permit. And also the new EIC, which is Election Identification Certificate, for those that do not have one of the other six, your passport, your uh, a military ID, including your veteran's health, uh, your um, certificate of naturalization or citizenship are also acceptable forms of ID. So call, find out, and head out to the polls informed, also ready to choose a party. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that's the first thing you have to do. You have to choose a party as you go vote. Mm-hmm. Yvonne, thank you much. Yvonne Ramon, Elections Administrator, Hidalgo County. Go to the website. At Hidalgo County, the Hidalgo County Elections Office, and they've got a list of where all the polling locations, all 75 Hidalgo County polling locations Mm. are. Yeah, I know.